Hey guys, in this video I want to get back to the basics with some simple vanilla modeling so we can just kind of do something simple. So the first thing we need to do is go up here to our preferences and enable the bool tool add-on. You can tick this on, save your preferences, and uh, you're good to go. So we're just going to make a very simple type of uh, design, so nothing complicated. I think it'll be a nice exercise. So what I want to do is press Shift A. Let me turn on my screencast keys or maybe move them over. Shift A, we're going to go to cube, and we're just going to start here. Now when I'm approaching my designs, I'm always going for some simple design elements, and we can get really in-depth into this subject, but uh, for the purposes of this video, I won't go too far into it. We actually have a course coming out on uh, really in-depth design stuff soon, so keep a lookout for that. But for now, I just want to get a cool looking shape. So. Perhaps what we could do is scale this down a little bit on the x-axis like that. Nothing crazy. And then we'll tab into, actually, first of all, let's press Control A and apply the scale because right now it's not uniform, which is going to affect our bevels potentially. So we'll press Control A and apply the scale. Cool. So what we're going to do now is tab into edge mode. And for anyone new here, I'm using the machine tools add-on. Um, it's a free add-on. You can search for it. Um, it just allows you to hop into edit mode quicker. That's it. But uh, either way, you just tab into edit mode or you can tab and press 1, 2, or 3 on your keyboard to get into vertex edge or face mode. In this case, I want to go into edge mode, press 3 on the numpad to go back into side view, and I'll bevel this with control B. Going to get a nice little bevel right there. Going to get a nice little bevel right here. And let me think, is that a bit too big maybe? Maybe it is. Let me make this one just a bit smaller, I think. And this one can be just a little bit bigger than the other one. Okay, cool. Now, to make this shape more visually appealing, what we can do is bevel the bevels, basically. So, um, this is a chamfer, it's just a 45 degree bevel here. And we can bevel the edges of this chamfer to make a bit more visual appeal. So, if I shift click on all these edges here, um, actually, I'm going to do these separately because generally I like to have different size bevels just to make it more interesting. So on this one, I'll do one size. We'll shift click both the edges and press control B. I'll give it maybe eight segments and we'll get something like this. We'll go to these two and make this one just a bit smaller. We'll go to this one and bevel there and then we'll go to this one and bevel here. And now you're going to see, just like that, we have a bit more visual interest going on. Notice that? What I do want to do, however, is make this a little bit longer. So I'm going to tab into vertex mode, hop into wireframe here, and we can box select this area with the B key, and then just kind of move it out. We can also press Alt-A to deselect, and then box select this bottom area, and then move this down a bit. And now we kind of have a bit more of an interesting, bigger shape. All right, awesome. So at this point, what I want to do is smooth out these faceted edges right here, so, or faceted faces rather. We're going to right click to shade smooth, and it's going to smooth over these hard edges. And to avoid that, we want to smooth based off of the angles of the edges, or of the angles between the two faces. So we can go into this panel and turn on auto smooth, and 30 degrees should be a fine uh, value here. What I also want to do is get a bit of a bevel on the edge to make the light reflect a bit more. So we can just go here to the modifiers panel, go to our bevel modifier. I'm going to make this one three segments, so tick this on by two. And then we'll just make it a little bit smaller. Generally what I do is I hold shift and then drag the amount down. And you're going to see it's kind of like fighting in the corner. Um, that's because of the auto smooth angle basically. So what we're going to do, or it's a, it's a hard and normals issue. So if we tick that on, that's going to fix it. Then we'll just hold shift and... Just make it a little bit smaller, and you're just going to kind of see the edges pop a bit more, right? That's kind of why we add those bevels for anyone new here. Okay, cool. And you're also going to see we kind of have a more defined outline, which implies depth, which is cool. So at this point, I kind of want to make an interesting little design on the interior. So what we're going to do here is press Shift-A to add in a cube. We're going to scale this cube down a bit. I'm just going to put it here in the corner somewhere. We can always adjust this later. For now, I just kind of want to get the element placed in the general location. Now, what I want to do is I want to echo details. This is a pretty cool way to make your designs a bit more visually appealing, is to echo detail that exists. 
So in this case, we have a chamfer right here. We could echo this detail over to this cube, um, and we're going to end up cutting a hole. So you'll see how it looks. But we're going to tab into edge mode and just bevel this one. We'll scroll down to make it one segment and simply echo that detail. So a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you get your designs to look cooler? Well, the first, you know, the first place to start is to simply look at what you already have because the answer could very well be right in front of you. You don't have to be as creative as you think. You just have to use what you already have and you can get some pretty cool results. But obviously it's not very cool yet, so let's make it cool. Um, what I also want to do at this point is bevel these, kind of like we did up here. So control B will make this one eight segments, make it a bit bigger. We'll go to this one and do a nice round bevel. We'll go to this one and do a round bevel as well. And then we'll go to this one and do another round bevel. Pretty cool. And let's just go ahead and do the same thing. Right click to shade smooth and then turn on our auto smooth here. Awesome. Now what I want to do is cut a hole into the mesh. So the first thing we need to do is select the piece we want to cut with and then shift click the piece we want to cut from. So we just select this one, shift click on this one. And generally your active selection, the one you selected last, will have a different color. I've customized my colors and the preferences, but generally you'll kind of see the difference between which one you have selected first and last, just for reference. Anyways, we're going to press Control minus on the numpad to cut a hole. Now for those of you without a numpad, you can actually press Control shift b on your keyboard, and we're going to want to use a brush boolean for this one. So we'll click on Difference. Cool. So you're going to see we have some really weird shading issues, and um, I'll show you why this is. It's very obvious once you see it. So we have a bevel modifier. The first one in the stack is a bevel, which is defining the edges here, right? And then what's happening after that bevel is we're running a boolean. Now we want to run the boolean first so that way it cuts the boolean and then adds a bevel around it after. Right now the bevel's going first before this boolean even exists. So the bevel has finished the operation and then it's cutting the boolean. If I want the, the bevel to affect this boolean here, it needs to go before the bevel. So that way it says, hey, cut the boolean first, cut the hole and then add the bevel so it affects this area, if that makes sense. And now you're going to see we have a pretty interesting looking shape in just a, you know, a minute or two there. Obviously I'm going slower for the tutorial, but you can get it done much quicker. So generally at this point what I would do is I would make a new collection for what I call our cutters. This is a cutter. Notice how if I move it around, it's um, just kind of changing places. It's cutting from the object. So we're going to right click, New Collection, going to double click on that collection and we'll just call this cutters. And then we can just go ahead and select this piece. And um, sometimes I get this question, people ask me why is it a cube as the outline and not the shape? Reason being is it's just because the um, if we go here to viewport display, it's because it's rendering this as the bounds. Think of the bounds as like the if you were to fit it inside of something. You can actually change this to a um, something different if you wanted to. You could change it to a wire if you want it to display that way instead. It doesn't really matter though because we're going to be hiding it anyways. So at this point we can press the M key and then move it to our cutters collection. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, turn it off right there. Now one thing I also do is I go up here and I click on this little camera. So whenever I render my objects I turn it off from the renders as well because I don't want my, um, I don't want my cutters to show up in any renders. So um, generally I just turn on this camera button then turn that off as well. The, the important part is that we can't see it in the viewport. Awesome, and if you wanted to be a bit more organized you could also use the main mesh. In this case it's called cube001 and we could press M and move this to the main collection up here as well. If you like to keep organized. Uh, I tend to not keep my hierarchy organized but I'll do it for this tutorial. Okay, so we have a pretty interesting looking shape here. And if at any point you want to move this around, you just turn it back on. You select your cutter here and you can just move it around, so no problem at all. I do want to leave mine where it is though. Okay, so notice how we move this around. It allows us to move the cutter around. But if I go into edit mode here, if I tab into edit mode, I don't have access to the geometry of that hole. I can't select anything. 
Reason being is because our Boolean is not applied. This is still what I like to call theoretical geometry. It's being displayed as executed, but the geometry doesn't truly exist until we apply the Boolean. So we can just go in here and apply it. And now that geometry is locked in. And if we try to move the cutter now, we'll no longer be able to move the hole. So just keep that in mind. This is what we call destructive modeling. So destructive modeling means we can't use the booleans to move things around and non-destructive means we can. So we're kind of working non-destructively at first and then going destructive later on. Don't worry too much about that though. Anyways, what I want to do now is um, I want to take this cutter right here. I want to turn it on and I want to run a slice to bring a bit more visual interest into the object here. So I'm going to select this and what I want to do is make it kind of offset around this area and we can do this a few ways an easy way would be to go into edit mode tab into edit mode select everything with the a key and then you can press alt s to scale along the normals and you're gonna see this kind of scales evenly around this portion I'm gonna press alt s again and make it just a bit smaller maybe right around here and now with this cutter what I want to do is shift click on here and this time we're going to press control forward slash on the numpad and that will run a slice and just like we did before we need to make sure that our booleans are above the bevel um, we're going to have two separate objects now so you're going to have to do it on both and now you're going to see we'll just hide this cutter you're going to see we have another kind of um visually appealing element on the side here and should we want to make it a little bit bigger we can simply go into edit mode here alt s and then make it a bit bigger and um, there we go, another design. I do, however, want to lock in this geometry. I want to apply this Boolean so I have access to it. So I'm just gonna go in here and apply it, and you're gonna see it doesn't let us. And the reason being is because this data is being shared with this one because um, when we ran the slice, it was using this original mesh to make this piece. If that's too confusing, then you can just click on this button right here, click that number, and then you should be able to apply it and uh, you're good to go. So now we have access to this geometry. So I'm gonna do something kind of interesting. It's gonna look like a sub D type of style, although it's not. So I'm gonna press Control R, left click and then right click. And what I wanna do is I wanna scale this in a bit. I wanna go to our, um, well, first of all, I wanna click here in edge mode, Control click down to here and then I just want to move this a bit to the right, kind of like that. We could also try using our uh, proportional editing up here. We can just press the O key or click on this button and just kind of um, see how this affects the different areas. I don't think I want it to pull away like that, though. It's going to look kind of weird to me. So instead, I'm just going to press a G and then Y. And I'm just going to kind of move it here until it looks interesting. I can also turn off the overlays if I want something a bit more, um, a bit easier to see, rather. I'm going to kind of have something like that. And then what I want to do is I want to bevel it. I want to press Control B, and I just want to bevel it. We can use eight segments. That's fine. And we'll bevel it right to about here. I think that should be okay. And then if I wanted to, I could even move this a bit further over. As a matter of fact, before we do that, notice how we have these triangles right here. I just want to get rid of this whole area completely. I'm going to press the C key for Circle Select. I'm going to paint this area press escape and then the F key to fill it. We'll do the same thing up here. And now we just have a flatter surface on the top. And then at this point, if I want to move this a bit more, I could basically just, um, what I'm going to do in this case is alt click the middle face. And then I can expand the selection by pressing control plus a few times on the numpad. And that's going to actually expand the whole thing. So, um, what I would need to do in this case is, just go like this, Alt, Shift, click. You hold the Alt key and you hold Shift. And then we can just kind of move this a bit further forward like that. And now we kind of have a cool looking element on the inside. So just a quick recap, you can hold the Alt key in face mode to select a strip of faces there. And you can hold the Shift key along with Alt to make sure you're selecting multiple. Just um, for any beginners out there. Cool. Now we have a pretty cool shape. A few things I want to mention, so for anyone kind of struggling with their overall design skills, they don't really know where to start or how to get a cool looking shape, 
all you need to do is just think of a very basic block out. You don't have to think super far. You just have to make a very simple uh, element that's a block out and then work from the detail on that block out. Notice how this piece in the middle is nothing more than kind of repeated elements and angles. This little chamfer right here, this little angle, echoes this one, and this straight area here echoes this one. So for anyone just struggling with a general block out or just getting something that looks cool, um, I totally relate, but once I kind of figured out how to just reuse detail I already have, things became so much easier. Just look at the angles and the shapes you already have and build on top of that. Another good point of focus is that we can concentrate details in uh, certain areas to bring a bit more visual appeal. Rather than scattering them into areas that are empty, do the complete opposite of what your brain thinks you should be doing. Put them in areas where we already have a lot of detail to pull all the attention into that one area. It's going to look a lot cooler that way. So I could actually just kind of build on top of this one. We don't have to do anything crazy. I could just tab into edge mode here and I could run like a little like a little crevice through the middle. So to do that, what I'm going to need to do is join these two vertices together. We'll go into vertex mode and shift click on both and press the J key. Go here and we can press shift R to repeat that command. And now if I just go into edge mode, tab into edge mode and then alt click on this edge, I can just press Control B, scroll down, make like a one segment here. Then I can press E to extrude, right click to cancel the extrusion, and then Alt S to scale along the normals here. And you're going to see we kind of have like another cool looking element on the inside. And all I'm doing is just kind of repeating the shapes. This shape is literally the same shape as this outer border here. So I'm not doing anything tricky or complicated. I'm just kind of looking at shapes and seeing how I can build on top of it. And notice how it looks a lot cooler. See the difference? We'll undo it. Uh, the bevel's popping a bit more, but see the difference there? Just something very small but looks cool. So at this point I'm kind of thinking, you know, how else can I build on top of this and just continue to bring in visual interest and make the shape look cool? You'll notice with like a lot of sci-fi games, for example, there's a lot of shapes that just look really cool, although they don't necessarily have any pure functionality behind it. So, it, you know, it depends that on the type of style you're going for. If you're a mechanical engineer, you might want to approach it a bit differently. If you're just making cool looking shapes and just practicing, this is a, a good approach. So I'm trying to think, I'm just kind of looking at this and just thinking in my head, how exactly can I build on top of what I already have and really just make it look cooler? So... A few things I have in mind, I could put like a little cut up here maybe. I could kind of make like an inset here in the back. We could try both and just kind of see how they look. Uh, a bunch of options really. So what I'm going to try at first is just adding in a cube here. Shift A will add in a cube. We're going to move the cube somewhere here. Scale it on the X a little bit. And then we can run a boolean by shift clicking on this object and then pressing control minus on the numpad. Or if you don't have a numpad, like I said, Control shift b and select it here. So we'll just select this piece now and make sure our Boolean is, you can always drop these menus down to make it smaller and just drag it up on the top. And now we have the bevel effect in this area. And one thing I do want to point out, let me move this to the cutters collection. Notice these pinches in the corners. We can fix that by going to the bevel modifier and simply going to geometry and changing the miter outer to an arc instead. So that's an interesting shape right there. It's not, not that bad. We could also go back into our cutters and just kind of move it around, turn off the overlays and just kind of play with the placement really. Maybe somewhere right here would be okay. Up here as well. I tend to not put things dead in the center because I like to offset it a bit towards the end. I think it looks cooler that way. So you could do it here or maybe you could do it here. I think I like this one better. It's a bit more clustered in this portion here. It's not too bad. Oh, and I also want to mention that if you go up here and turn on cavity, it'll make your edges pop on the model a bit more. I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning, but um, if, if you have the question as to why my model looks a bit cooler, it's because I have this cavity option turned on. You can turn on shadow as well, but if you have a slower computer, it might affect your performance, but in most cases, it should be okay. I turn off shadow though. I don't like it. All right, awesome. So. Pretty cool looking shape, nothing complicated, but that's not the point of this video. 
Now I think we'll add in one more simple element here before we end the video. I didn't want to make this too, uh, super long, I just wanted to make it informative for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a cube with Shift A. I'm going to go to Cube. And what I want to do is make a little inset here in the back and I'll show you how to do that. First I want to move the cube over here. We'll just press the G key, move it here something like that and then what I want to do is just delete out all of these faces here we'll press X and then delete faces and then uh, we'll just have a single plane right here at this point I just want to tab into edge mode we'll select this edge we'll press E to extrude and then hold control to kind of snap it if it's not working you just go up here and change the snap to increment and then I'm going to select this top edge right here press E to extrude then hold control as well and just kind of follow the angle of this entire piece. Great, so now what I want to do is select these two edges, Control B, and then we'll just kind of follow the, um, the bevels there. And now what we need to do is close this area off. So I'm just going to select, um, first of all, I need to move this edge just a bit further down so it's not um, intersecting that plane on the bottom. And then we're just going to shift click on this edge. And to close it off, we can press E to extrude. We'll press Y, just move it somewhere over here, and then press F to um, fill it. And then to fill in the whole thing, we can just select everything and press the F key. Cool. I know the shape looks weird, but we're not going to really use it for too long. So um, what we're going to do is shade this smooth, turn on Auto Smooth, and then run another slice here in the back. So I'm going to shift click on this piece. We'll press Control forward slash on the numpad. Likewise, you can just press Control shift b and choose Slice, and we're going to get this. And if you're getting a weird issue like this, what we need to do is select both these pieces, so this one right here, and we need to go to the Boolean and change the Solver over to Fast. We're going to do the same thing for this one, and that should fix the problem. And then all we need to do is select this piece and make sure the Boolean's above the bevel. Same for this piece, make sure the Boolean is above the bevel. And if you still have some weird issues with it, what we might need to do is check the normal orientation. That might be an issue. Basically, if we select this cutter right here, we can tab into edit mode, select everything with the A key, and then press shift N. And what that's going to do is it's going to flip or um, recalculate the normals for us and give us this effect. Then I can just select this, press the S key to scale it in, and now we kind of have this cool looking shape. We'll scale this a bit on the x-axis like that. Looks pretty cool. A little bit too small in my opinion. We'll scale this up a bit more. And perhaps this is just a bit too big. So what I'm going to do is grab this and just kind of play with the sizing and just move it over a bit maybe. Awesome. And now we kind of have this cool shape. And what I want to do is I want to, um, I want to apply this Boolean here. So we'll select the right one in this case it is this boolean we'll click apply and like i said if it doesn't let you apply it just go here click on this number and then you should be able to apply it and now what i want to do is just tab into edge mode and just drop a uh, a chamfer so we'll select this edge and control click down shift click this edge and then control click all the way up and then we can just add like a little chamfer like that and you're going to see this edge right here begins to overlap as I as I make it bigger. Notice how it starts to overlap. What I'm going to do is select this edge and press Control X to make a bit more room. And it should have enough room now to actually work out as we want. So we're just going to Control click um, and go here, up to the top, Shift click, and then Control down to the bottom. And we'll just press Control B. And now we have like a nice little chamfer on the back there. Awesome, maybe a little bit bigger. Eh, I guess that size is fine, not really a big deal. And then finally what I would like to do is I would like to fuse this piece to this piece. Notice how there's no clear connection. So if I try to fuse this right now using a union boolean, we have a bevel here and we have a bevel here and they're gonna override each other. We're gonna get like double bevels and things like that. Basically to avoid that problem, what I would like to do is remove this bevel and then I'll just um I don't think we need these booleans we can get rid of them because they were booleans from this piece that had nothing to do with this one and then what we can do is shift click on this piece and press control plus on the numpad 
or control shift B and then choose union. And if the shading's off, you already know the drill, we'll move the boolean above the bevel there and it should work. And if it doesn't, we just need to move this in a little bit more so that way it's actually touching the mesh there. If it's not touching it, nothing will happen. But now you're gonna see if we move it in, it will kind of like connect around here very nicely. And then we'll press M and move that to the cutters collection and just go ahead and hide it. And now we have a pretty cool looking shape here. So this is where I'm going to end the video. I didn't want to make it too long or, you know, drone on over just a bunch of random stuff. So I think this is a good amount of time to stop. And what I'm going to encourage you to do as a little homework assignment is build on top of this shape. Create your own design. And I want to see what you come up with. Maybe add a few more details. Just kind of building on top of what you already have. And I'd love to see what you come up with. So if this video helped, then um, I'd recommend grabbing our hard surface ebook. It's free. It's linked in the description. There's a ton of cool tricks in there you could use um, in your workflow. I'd recommend downloading that. And um, if the video helped, let me know. I'd be happy to do more like this. And that's about it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Looking forward to see what type of results you get.